Hi, I'm Steve Zapato, and you're listening to the Happiness Agenda podcast. And you might be listening to Speaker Talks because this um, episode is important enough for me to put on both of my podcasts. Uh, it's amazing to me how many of us, how many Americans, uh, we take some things for granted and yet we, we let other things just slide away. And one of the biggest things I think we're challenged with is money. And that's because we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about money. Why is that? The only way you get smarter, the only way you learn more is by talking about it, right? When I was growing up, my mom and dad said, hey, the adults are going to talk, you kids go in the other room. And they should have been saying, you kids need to come in here and listen to what we're talking about when it comes to money. Because one of the things they used to tell me is save 10%. When I was a young adult, they went, make sure you save 10%. Well, when I was a young adult, our income, when I was 20 years old, I was working $1.26 an hour. That's what I made, $1.26 an hour. So when you get done for the week, you know, you work 30 hours for the week, you made 40 or 50 bucks is all. And it seemed to me like five bucks, 10%, five bucks. Why in the world would I put $5 away? It's never, you know, $5, that's nothing, right? Okay, so we're going to talk about why you should put $5 away. Well, it might be more than that if you got more than that. But I have the pleasure of, of talking with Chris Miller today. And uh, she and I have talked before, and she and I are talking now because she, what she has to say is absolutely vital to yours and my success. And Chris has been in practice for 30 years with over 6,000 clients, right, on her watch. And no one has lost a dime in any market risk. What? No one has ever lost money talking to Chris? Well, I think we need to bring her on. What do you think? Chris, are you there? Yay. Yay, you. Chris Miller. Yay. So there's a lovely Chris. And we're going to talk today about money. Would you guys like to learn more about money? Tony Robbins wrote a, a novel on money, uh, which I couldn't even get through because it was so boring. One of the worst things you can do is be boring about money. And so I know it's Tony Robbins, but he was still boring unless you see him in person. Uh, which is what I tell people all the time. Most people don't write to be entertaining. They don't write to hold your interest. They write because it's supposed to be good for you to read what they wrote. But we're going to talk today. And then Chris has a book out too that you're going to need to pick up. Ta-da, there it is. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Chris, first of all, tell us a little bit about you. Where are you from? How long have you been doing what you're doing? And what got you started in it? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me here. It's an honor to talk to you and all your wonderful people that are listening to you. And I've basically been in practice for 30 years. I started as a paralegal. I worked with an attorney creating living, revocable living trusts. And what got me started was wait, I was- wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause. Revocable living trusts. Uh, how many of you out there listening to this even know what that is? Cause I don't, I mean, I know I'm supposed to have something. I know I'm supposed to he help people and share st certain things, something. And I've heard about living trusts. I've heard about trusts. I've heard about, I don't, She's going to tell us a little bit today, but go ahead. We we can have a whole section just on that for sure. <laughs> know, That's a whole download right there. But um, simply put, it's a document that protects your assets from probate conservatorship. Um, younger people have children and mom and dad go out to dinner and they'll come back. So it's got guardianships inside of them to protect them, powers of attorney for financial health care. And it's so important in the world we live. It's not just an end of the life document because you need those for now. So most people, now they've been around since the middle, middle ages and only the rich people quote, rich. use them. But just recently in the last 30, 35 years have people found out about living trusts and they basically are a legal document that allows you to totally avoid probate, conservatorship and all the fees and taxes that are charged. But wait a minute. What? She says you avoid probate, conservatorship. We don't even know what that is, do we? None of us. We are not no. savvy on money and it makes me crazy. I don't know about you, but it makes me crazy that we are not knowledgeable. And you should be wanting to get all the information you want. And trust me, she's going to go over a few things with you. So stick with us. That's right. That's right. And, you know, it's a really good point, Steve, because you go to school, you learn how to make money, you get out of school. And what do you do? You go make money. And what do most people do? Give it to Spend somebody it. else Spend to it. gamble. It's that's a right. gamble. And it's, not so a ga it's not a gamble. We don't even give it to people. To how many people have a significant uh, investment program started? You know, when I talk to people, I say, who's your stockbroker? And they go, oh, I don't have one. 
None, mm -hmm. not in any. They don't say, oh, I'm using uh, the online guy or I'm using this. They got none, nothing. I said, you're not investing any money at this point in time. They go, no. I go, but you made like $55,000 last year. They go, yeah. And I go, and you got a new truck mm -hmm. and, and you went on big vacation and you're planning something next year. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, but you don't have any money tucked away. And you know, 35, 45 years old, let's say you're making $100,000 because I'm from John Deere country, Chris. And in John Deere country, when you were making $55,000 a year, you were making some nice bucks. Now, with all the mm -hmm. overtime and that kind of stuff, the guys in the shop might be able to pull down 75, 85,000. But most of us, even at 75 or 85,000, we were still spending our money. Isn't that what we do? When I told you, my mom and dad said, save 10%. Uh, I didn't. When I was married and, and my wife and I went to London and my wife and I bought leather furniture and my wife and I bought grandfather clock. We didn't save any money because it seemed like 10%. Well, you know, how much is 10%? It's not. Now, 10% was enough to send us on vacation, but it wasn't enough for us to plan for our retirement. Weird. So that's exactly why I do what I do. So what happened was that in this, in this meeting, I was with an attorney and we were working with a widow on a living trust. And like I said, um, we can divide this up and, and do different shows specifically on each thing, but I'm going to try to cover a whole lot in the small amount of time that we have here. You know, like in my book where it says three secrets for safe money and a fabulous future. It's not what's secret. It, what's, it called? what's it called? Ready for pre-retirement. Plan oh, retirement pre early. Right. Oh, plan retirement pre early. Pre-retirement. Now, That's the let's point. face it. Most That's of us don't point. even think about retirement until no. we're like, Five it's years like, away. Nobody wants that's a bad word. Even retirement, people think of death. Well, but people, second life. That's right. right? That's right. People say, I, I don't I don't want to retire. Yes, you do. Retirement should mean you get to do what you want when you want because you planned for it. Retirement is people say, Well, I don't want to sit on my porch and rock my life away. That's not what retirement is. That's what we've portrayed it as. That's what the powers that be want you to think it is. So yeah, that you go, right. I don't want that. Just it's like second life. When, when you were at the school, you weren't taught to own a company. You weren't taught to start a business. And I'm going to tell a quick story, but you were taught to get a job. When mm -hmm. I was teaching college and, and uh, I taught speech courses, that's what I do for a living. I teach people how to be great speakers so they can make a lot more money. But um, when I was teaching it, people would say, but, but Mr. You know, we, they talk about something to do with business. And I'd say, well, that's, that's not how you do business. This is how you do business. And they'd go, well, that's not what my uh, business teacher said, Mr. Sapato. And I go, oh, well, let me ask you this. How many businesses has your business teacher owned or operated or managed and still does? And a week later, they'd come back to class and they'd go, Mr. Sapato, I talked to my business teacher. Yeah, they've never owned, operated or managed a business. They've, they've always taught, right? And I go, so then what do they really know about business? I, I know people get mad at me because they say, well, you got to know stuff out of college and stuff to learn business. I go, you need to learn accounting, you need to learn this. But, you know, when it comes to doing business, there's no better person out there to teach you how to do business than somebody who's already been in business. And now I can teach you how to do business. I can teach you how to advertise better. I can teach you how to make more money. I can teach you how to network better. But you know what I can't teach you? How to manage your money better. That's Chris. Right, right. Chris? Thank you. That's absolutely true because it, it's not that I'm so wonderful. It's just that I've seen thousands of portfolios and there's never any the same. And everybody seems to make the same mistake. So as I was telling you the story, what happened was I was sitting in this room and this is in 91, 92, 1991 or two, yeah. <laughs> right, right, ancient. And I'm sitting with this attorney. I'm the paralegal and this little widow. All she has was a car and a house. And he wanted to charge her at this time, $5,000 for a revocable living trust. And she did not have any money in the bank. And I now, said, what's a, what's a revocable living trust? A revocable, why, would she, why would she need a, one? A revocable living trust is a legal entity that's created to own and manage your estate. And what its purpose is, is to avoid probate, conservatorship. It gives you guardianship for minor children. Gives so you she power. Wanted to, so she wanted to leave that to her family? What the revocable had? living trust is, is a legal document that avoids probate and lets you leave your estate to your family or your okay. charity. All right. So this right. lady, little old lady had a house and a car. Uh, no money in the bank. 
-hmm. And I said, and he wanted to charge her $5,000. So I said, hey, let's, can you give her, a, she was out of the room. I said, can't you give her a break? I mean, I felt sorry for her. He looked at me as cold as ice and said, no. And I looked at him and I went, this is what I charge. Bye. Did you? And that's what inspired me. That's what got me to say, you know what? I'm going to make this easy for the average person to get. So I'm not bragging, but I'm one of the first people in Southern California to do workshops on what's the difference between a will and a living trust. Now, these things have been around since the Middle Ages, but only the wealthy people knew about it. It shocked me. Nobody knew. So they're going to work their whole life and end up giving all the, the money away in court costs and fees and attorneys right at the end of their life. And then their family gets, you know, two thirds or a third of the estate. Made, it gave me an inspiration to help people. So I started with Revocable Living Trust. That's and boy, cool. they were mad at me. I was giving them away. You know, wait, I, give me how much did you charge? Can I ask what did you charge? I back? know it will blow your mind. Back then, the attorneys were charging 5,000, you know, 25, whatever, different prices, right? I was charging $199 for the same oh. trust. Yeah, this is well. This that is, that can't be right because I only hmm. pay the big mucks to get the right advice. Yours couldn't have been good advice. I made over six thousand of them, and I never had one problem. They work. They're written by attorneys. I work for attorneys, and and I'm what's called now. I'm an LDA. I'm a legal document assistant. So I do everything that attorneys do, but talk in court. But, but mind you, I have talked in court because I sued a few of those attorneys. <laughs> won, and I actually oh, won. Nice, nice. Right, and then they filed bankruptcy. <laughs> but that's another story. Uh, yeah, <laughs> How, the loopholes will make you nuts, won't they? Loopholes. Well, that and that's what that's what Chris is trying to show you. You have loopholes to avoid all the stuff that, that most of us don't know how to avoid. Yeah, and it's in it's been purposely set up that way to keep us stupid till the end of our life. So now this is how I saw it because I did this the first 10 years of my practice. Mind you, it's been 30 plus years here. So the first 10 years I started people. One thing I started noticing was all these people are coming into my office, starting the retirement plan at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Some is not right here. Now, <laughs> right? <laughs> you I'm know what I'm years saying. Old, I need a retirement plan. And you're already retired. So, but what, what I saw was basically this this pattern. And and this is back in the days when we had high inflation, which is where we're going again, or are. And they're living, they say they had, you know, money in the bank and they were living off the interests of their bank. And then in the late 90s, the crash hit. Everybody lost money and everybody was freaked out. I was freaked out. What happened was I lost money. Like, why am I losing money? And so I started researching. I realized, oh, my, they did not teach me everything. They want me to go out there and sell stocks. And, you know, you got to risk your money to make money. It was like something is not right here. And I did not like losing money. That really bothered me because I worked really hard for it. So what I discovered was it's was actually safe places that you could put your money that have been around since the middle ages same like the living trust that only the wealthy people knew about where you would never lose your principal so what i did was i started myself before i'd even told anybody about it it was really important to me because i know i got to meet my maker i want to do good things for people so i literally prayed about it like i don't want to get in hurt anybody so i got into annuities 25 years ago and I've done very well and I've never lost a dime. So I started learning about tax-free income and different strategies that were really behind the curtain. Now, now wait, I'm going to, and I'm going to ask the people who are listening because you need to pay attention. First of all, answer me this. What's an annuity, right? This is not for Chris. This is for you listening. Do you know what an annuity is? Because I don't think I do. But if you, you know, go to your broker, your guy that's handing your money, they don't like them at all. They hate them because they're, they're in a competition with people that do annuities. An annuity is like a savings account with an insurance company, like a CD is a savings account with a bank, right? Okay. The annuity, every hundred has the requirement insurance companies, every hundred dollars you give them, they have to have the same amount of money in cash 
available. So if you want to cash your policy out, they have to be able to go to and hand you that money. So every oh, wait, so, so wait, so you're telling me I should buy insurance? I haven't gotten there yet. Not necessarily. <laughs> no, no, I'm not talking about insurance. And annuity is like a savings house. So it's like a it's like a growth vehicle so that when you put your money in there, there's a floor. You never lose your principal. You're only going to catch the upside. So as of the time of this show here, the annuities that I own are performing anywhere from six to almost 10 percent with no market risk. Wow. wow. They're no tax, risk. No, no, no zero. Risk. Zero. You never lose your principal. So are you folks hearing put, that? Wow. Say I put a hundred thousand dollars in an annuity, and there's hundreds of companies and lots of them. So I'm not saying they're all good. They're variable annuities. Those are bad. That's the kind your broker sells because wow. it's in stocks. It goes up and down. I'm talking about the ones that have a floor on them where you never lose your principal. They're, cool. they're safe. Okay. Now there's two kinds. There's an income kind where you can actually set up income that will pay you for the rest of your life or an accumulation kind where you can reach in and take 10% out of it every year. So that gives you more liquidity. Okay. I work only with A companies because I think that, you know, I'm not relying on the government, but the companies are the ones that have to pay it back. And I'm, you know, I do this for myself because I feel that we're at the you know, we're kind of back where we were when we had the, the plague before, right before the, the Great Depression. We're in that same scenario. Well, actually, it's worse because it's going to be a global depression. And I'm an optimist. I'm not a gloom and doom person. <laughs> I'm just watching the money okay. and I'm watching the way it's manipulated. You can't print trillions of dollars that have no gold backing. Hello. <laughs> you know, this isn't going to last very long. And we're living on the fumes of a lot of dead things. So yeah. it's it's going to explode. And everybody knows it. It's kind of, we kind of thought it would happen a few years ago. So what's, so that's one of the reasons why I got into safe money 30 years ago, because I did know the times that we're in, the era that we're in on this big change on the planet. And it's global. It's not just United States. But all of that being said, the two different kind of annuities. They're like savings accounts with an insurance company. And so what they do is they do get the growth of the market with no risk. So inside of an annuity are little indexes. And so the performance, as I said, in an accumulation annuity is anywhere from six to 10%. I think things are going to be on the lower end, even though they're going to raise it, they have to raise it. They have to raise in interest rates to offset the inflation. Now, mind so, you. So let me, so, and I'm going to ask the people out there again, ask anybody who's listening. Here's the question for you. Do you have money in a savings account right now? Because I talk to people all the time who might have, you know, they might have almost no real retirement, but they've always got money in a savings account, whether it's 5000 or $10,000 in a savings account. If you don't know this, your savings account is paying like 0.3% or 0.5%. It's not paying a 1%. She's talking about six or eight, ten percent maybe, right? Depending on what you're invested. But your savings account, uh, you might well uh, go to Disney World and buy a bunch of souvenirs and then sell them on your own because you're going right. to make more money. But exactly. what she's saying is, and and let's make sure we've got this. Even if the bottom drops, so let's say the bottom drops, and you're making, I don't know how you can make less than 0.5 percent, but you're, you know, if the bottom drops, if you're in in an annuity, my understanding is that you'll still always have your base amount. So let's say you get you invest t t that $10,000. And right now you can make 6%, which is like what, 12 times as much as you're making in your savings account. And yet, if the bottom drops out, they might still be paying you 1% or 2%, which means you're still making a little money even when the bottom drops out. Now, is that about could that be possible, Chris? Right. And when you have your money in these banks, you're actually paying taxes on money you're losing because you're going to get a 1099 on your 0.1% or 0.5%. Now, I don't want you to go run and take all the money out because I want you to have rainy day money. That's another thing that most people don't have. Be prepared for more lockdowns. I'm sorry to say, be prepared for 911s, whatever it is, lockdown, wars, rumors of wars, all of those things. Make sure you have rainy day money. It's just that important. Same with having, 
you know, extra food, extra water. I live in California, earthquake country, right? Or fires. I have a to-go bag in the, in the closet for a fire. Well, you got to have a to-go in your mindset around money. So why I say healthy. Well, they, they call that bug out, bug out bag. You got a bug out bag. Yeah. We all should have bug out bags in case anything I'm, happens. I'm talking about a bug out bag for your money. So that's why I say healthy money for a happy mm-hmm. life. Cause you're not going to worry about losing money. Mm-hmm. So, and it isn't a one size fit all. It's not like I'm selling annuities to everybody because there's different strategies for different ages. The younger ages can get the, like your grandkids that we we're talking about, those guys can get tax free income for life. As an example, this is it. It's built on an insurance chassis. So that means the money's coming out tax free. So I had a kid, this guy was 38. And he was putting $500 in a month. When he retired, he was set to get eighty to $100,000. Did you hear me? Eighty to $100,000 every year tax-free for life. Wow. I was so mad when I found out about this. I was 58, okay? I was like, why didn't anybody tell me about this? Because I, if I would have started in my 30s, you know, I... I'd be in my second life, the life without work, which to me is my give back, the time where I can take all, like you're doing, you take your gifts and you find ways that you can help your community or give back or your charities or, you know, whatever it is. So, so there's some very creative, cool things. And inside of these things are long-term care. There's another one of those three secrets is catastrophic illness. And we're living in the world of catastrophic illness oh, right yeah. Oh, yeah. and so your your hmos or your medicare or your insurance depending on what age you are don't cover long-term care and that can cost you anywhere from five to fifteen thousand dollars a month a month a, a month. month my, my mother's in a long-term care she's been there now uh well she's been in uh, uh a nursing home for about a year and she was in a, an assisted living before that, and the assisted living uh, was five thousand a month. Right. The nursing home is only is only thirty eight hundred a month. Right. It yeah. depends. It depends on your zip code. And yep. you know, when my mom had cancer, and we're you know our family was a big not going to a nursing home. So, but but my parents were proud, and they didn't want their kids to take care of them. So we had to yep. get a caregiver. The caregiver, and even at ten dollars an hour. Right. It was like 15,000. It was expensive. And, and the point is, we're not, we don't even think about that. Like when you're 40, you can't imagine what it's like when you're 60. And when you're 60, you're not thinking about what it's like when you're 80. But in my business, because I've just because I've done it so long, I know what each age needs. And I know that, like you said, you got to start early so you get all of these plans in place because there's not going to be anybody that's going to come and do it for you. You've got to be your own bank and learn these cool strategies that aren't new. They've just not been talked about. There's a new Facebook uh, push out there and it says, and uh, maybe it's a TikTok, I'm not sure, but it says no one's coming. That's the big, no one's coming. No one's going to save you. No one's going to help you. And that's what she's saying is you need to start looking out for yourself 30 years from now, 30 or 40 years from now. Um, I, I, I talk about the rule of 72, but um, here's what I learned about the rule of 72. If you put $100 a month away for your kid from age 10 to age 20 at an 8% annual average return on your investment, if you put $100 a month, so if you're, I, I tell people, if you're getting a tattoo, take that money and put it in your kid's bank, right? Uh, take care of your kids because Here's what happens. You put $1,000 a year away from age 10 to age 20. And when they hit 65 years of age, there's like a million dollars waiting for them. How would you like it if your mom and dad had put some money away for you? And when you hit 60, 65, it went poof. And you now have a million dollars in the bank. But wait, there's more. wait, there's more. Wait, there's Chris more. Chris will tell you more. Go, Chris. Imagine where you're putting this money, because where are you going to put it? Now, if you're you're saving that and you're putting it in the stock market, you are gambling. And that's what I saw in my practice, because the second 10 years of my practice was 
people would come in and this time the market was down. It's like a roulette wheel. When are you going to retire? Is it going to be up or down? And that is not healthy. That's not happy. It's unnerving. So people are always living in this fear. Steve, AARP did this survey, 69%, I think it's more now, are more afraid about running out of money than dying. Oh, yeah. I mean, to live in that fear, right, all the time, instead of being empowered. Of, well, and how much, you know, how much money, do you, how money. money do, does the average person need? How much money does the average person need after they retire? What should they have? Well, it's it depends on their lifestyle. I mean, I have a client that had $44 million and he didn't even have a living trust. So it depends on what kind of a lifestyle people well, in. I, I always say for the average children. the average person who makes a hundred thousand let's say a hundred thousand dollars a year if if the average family let's even if you're a family making a hundred thousand dollars if you want to keep continue to live your lifestyle you figure okay eighty thousand and then you keep seventy thousand after taxes so seventy thousand is what you live on per year so if you're going to retire at 70 and you're going to die at 90 you guys get to decide that that's 20 years at seventy thousand dollars a year, and that's that's not because she said forty four million. Let's go back to a hundred thousand dollars. You make a hundred thousand dollars, and you live on seventy thousand. And if you're going to live twenty years, you need one point four million dollars to live the way you've always lived. Right. Unless you've got dollars. that on track, you mm -hmm. need to really listen to Chris. Of course, Chris, I'm going to interrupt. And I, I need people to be able to get a hold of you before we run out of time. So oh, okay. tell us how they get a hold of you. Okay. Well, you can call my office at 951-926-4158. Say that again, 951. 951-926-4158. I work with people all over the country. Um, or you can email me at chris, K-R-I-S, at healthy money, happy life dot com and you can catch me there you can also meet with and Chris. what was it healthy money dot com is that what you said healthy money happy life dot com when your money's healthy you have happy life <laughs> dot com that's my email that's my website you can go up there and read about me and you know I'm a national speaker number one best selling author you can get my book there all of that. Invite me to speak to your groups, just like Steve did. I'd like to do that. So fun. Lots of virtual. I go everywhere. Um, and you can also meet with Chris Miller. That is also a, a calendar link that's a dot com. Meet with Chris Miller dot com. And you can go right on my calendar. But it's real simple. And then what I do is what's a financial fitness strategy session. So I at, get on the phone with you and I ask you your age, your health, your goals. And I'll send you a few videos for you to watch of what I'm talking about so you can break down the details. Then I'll research what I'm talking about to see how it applies to you. And then what we'll do is I'll, you'll come to my office virtually. I'll share my screen with you. I'll show you what the research is. I'll show you how to read it. Then I'll send it to you. By the way, there's no charge for this. Uh oh, I man, it's free. Well, I, it's free. It is no what? money for because I wait, believe. There, that, wait, there's a catch here, isn't there? There's a catch. catch. Come Look, on. If I do a good job, I get a commission. So if you like what I show you, that's how I get paid. I get one commission, and guess what? I'm with you for life. I hate these guys. I changed my model, so I'm different than most people you're going to see. I hate these guys that they sell you something and then they're gone. They're not calling you up and say, "Hey, you got to move your money now. We're going to have a crash." They're gone. I'm with you for life. That's me. That's just how, look, I want to know I have someone there that I can contact, you know, so, and I'm not being paid for that. That's just how I am. I get one commission I'm, and it's, I'm going to, yeah, I'm you know, going to jump in and Chris has heard this, but um, I, I had a friend who was uh, a Merrill Lynch stockbroker and he would keep going on these cruises. And I would ask, how do you keep going on these cruises? He'd say, I win them. I go, what do you mean you win them? He'd go, well, a stock company will come, you know, co contact our office, obviously Merrill Lynch nationwide and say, hey, for everybody who sells this much of our stock in the next, I'll say, 90 days, uh, you get a, a free beer mug. But if you sell this much, you get a free cruise. And if you sell this much, you get to go to Europe. And he was, I'll bet you every six months he had a cruise that uh, that he and his wife went on. And I said, well, so 
is this a good stock? And he, his answer just floored me. He'd been doing this for 20 or 30 years. He said, I don't care. I get paid, you know, uh, to go on a cruise. So if I sell enough of that stock, I go on a cruise. And I went, yeah, but what about your people? And he went, oh, I'll take care of them in the long run. But for the short run, I get a cruise. And I thought that was just devastating that yeah. he wasn't in it for you. I mean, they'll always tell you they're in it for you. But like Chris says, hey, I will do this much for you for free. I will show you how we can do this for free. And if you have an interest, now we have a conversation that might involve you sharing your money so that you can make more money. <gasps> right, wow. right, right. And it and it's uh, it, to me, it's not about the money. It's about doing being have integrity and be honorable and do unto others like I want to have done to me. And so it's so that to me is really important. And if I do a good job, you know, like what I show you and then you tell your friends and that's how I've been successful. You know, that's why I couldn't do the stock like, oh, you got to get this because I want to go on the cruise. I hated that model. And I hated the model of how people, the attorneys do the trust. Well, you know, I think so I changed I think, that too. <laughs> yeah, I think most people I was doing a, a workshop decades ago. And I remember somehow we got to talking about money. It wasn't about money because I don't know money, right? But it, we were talking about something. Somebody asked a question. I went, well, you know this. And they went, well, you know, I got a stockbroker for that. And I went, oh, I said, good question. I said, how does your stockbroker make money? And they said, well, when I make money, my stockbroker makes money. And I went, and there were like 30 people in this group. And I went, how many people understand that? And 80% of the hands went, yeah, when, my stock, when I make money, my stockbroker makes money. And I went, not true at all. Not true at all. Your stockbroker makes money when you move your money or you reinvest some new money, but they don't make any money if you make money. So their interest, and I was stunned to learn this when I was in my 30s, that your stockbroker doesn't make money when you make money. They make money when you move your money. That's why they're constantly calling you to go, hey, we should invest in this or we should move some of your money over here because then they get a commission. Right. And right. it was it was ast astounding to me that... And I'll jump in again. Um, I just learned that uh, there's, uh, I'm trying to think what it's called, uh, tax bonds or something, where if I didn't pay my taxes, uh, my taxes get sold to somebody, and that person at an auction can buy my taxes, and I have to pay them 18%, right? 18% on my unpaid taxes when I decide to redeem them. So if I don't want to lose my house or lose my apartment or lose my condo or whatever it is, then I have to pay them, you know, whatever that value was, plus 18%. Um, so if I let it go two or three years, guess what? I'm paying a ton of money that I couldn't afford to pay. And yeah. when I said, uh, I said to them, by the way, if you ever need a, an idea on how you can make 18% on your money, I said, call me and I will show you how do you can guarantee 18%. And uh, somebody stood, he raised his hand. This guy raised his hand. And he said, that's bullshit. I'm, pardon my grammar on this, but he said, that's bullshit. I went, I'm sorry, who are you? And he said, I'm a stockbroker, right? <laughs> and notice he didn't jump up when we were talking about how they make money. <laughs> he jumped up when I said, I can guarantee 18%. And he said, nobody can guarantee 18%. I said, um, first of all, you got to know what you're talking about before you want to debate me. And I, yes, I said, it's a, and I remember, I don't remember the term now, but back then I knew the term, which was, you got to invest in taxes, you know, unpaid taxes, and there's a way to do it. Um, and, you know, I always sent him to this other guy who knew how to invest in unpaid taxes. But it was funny to me, the stockbroker jumped up to say, you're full of poo because you can't guarantee that. I said, I don't guarantee it. The county guarantees that money. So always remember, you can learn more from everybody around you. Um, and your stockbroker should have been saying, hey, I want to learn how to make 18% rather than calling me names. But that's what Chris can help you do. We got about uh, five more minutes, Chris. But that's what Chris can mm -hmm. help you do. So uh, the reason I left that running around along the bottom is I want you to reach out. I want you to talk to her. I want you to call her and uh, let her talk to you, show you, because one of the greatest challenges for the american today is how to keep and make more money boom and it's chris at healthy money happy life for the email okay but that's the website yeah. so that but just uh, to tag on what you just said steve those guys are making three to five percent on your accounts even when they're not making money the fees that there's fees that are like a you know, broadcasts, and then there are fees that are hidden. But most brokerage accounts can be anywhere from 2 to 5% in fees. Oh, see, I didn't know that either. It depends on, you know, which setup you've got, you know. 
uh, not all of them that way, but that's kind of an average. Yeah. So then not only do you have the risk of losing money, but you're paying these fees and, and they're making money even when they're not moving money. I used to think it was just when they moved the money, yeah. but a lot of these companies are making, and it's built, you can't find it on your statement <laughs> inside of there. I've Wait looked, a minute. You they, know. They, do they work for the government? Is that the deal? You can't they're find friends, right? They're wanna... the buddies. They're the they're they're the ones oh, that are cheering oh, them on. Crazy, right? it's crazy, isn't it? it? Is How crazy. much we don't know. Yeah. Well, that's so much. Nancy Pelosi, you know, in that that group where that just came out that they were using insider trading right. in order right. to make themselves even richer than they are, and and it was I I posted the thing on Facebook because I'm a nutball and you know what. I, First of all, I think all of lifetime politicians need to be voted out. So there's my pitch for the day. But right. <laughs> uh, she actually stood up and I, I wrote this on my Facebook. These guys are actually standing up saying, hey, we're allowed to do this and it's legal. And, and the only reason it's legal because they built a loophole into their right. own laws so that they can right. do this as Congress people. Yeah. And so you and I can't do it. We would get arrested. We'd be the Martha Stewart's and get arrested and sent to jail for doing insider trading. But it's yeah. okay for them. And they stand up and vehemently defend themselves for doing something that you right. would get arrested for anyway. Right. So. Well, if, you know, and it wasn't that way when the other guys were in charge and they did insider training, so, trading. I mean, and it isn't, wasn't legal and yeah. it really isn't legal technically, but well, there's no accountability no. in the system right now. And, but what goes around comes around. So eventually it will come around, right? It yeah, has we hope. To. We hope. The good will well, win. But the good will win. I, I, I believe. Yeah, I don't know about that, but see, that's like, I ask people, and I've been asking people for decades. I said, is it okay if I bribe you in your job? And they mm -hmm. went, well, no, you can't bribe me. I could lose my job if I take a bribe. I went, well, that's what I, I thought was true, but it's not true. And they went, well, yeah, I would lose my job if I took a bribe. And I went, well, then it must depend on how much money you make. And they went, what do you mean? I went, well, see, the whole point of a lobbyist is to bribe the Congress people to vote their way. And they went, oh, what? I went, check out and see what a lobbyist does. <laughs> and a lobbyist... Yeah. Who's illegal? They start at nine hundred thousand dollars for their salary because they give away millions of dollars to the Congress people. Right. So it's it's legal, and that's been legal for 50, 60 years. So when you say, "I hope it comes around," never came around to those people, right? Well, it will come. What goes around comes around. I I believe good will win. God will win. I believe that in the end. But we're going to go through a lot of quote hell to get there. I'm not saying that. And a lot of the guy, bad guys will get away quote away with it. But really, in reality, they don't get away with it. But the point is, whatever they do, you got to be accountable for yourself, yeah. your money, and the way that you've got to protect it because they aren't going to come and help you. They don't care about inflation, the system, the powers that be. It's all greed. It's all self. So, okay, we know that. So what are you going to do? And then when you're planning your future and when you're going to retire, there's so many things you got to think about. Like some people say, well, I'm going to turn 62 and I'm going to take Social Security. Well, you just lost 30%. If you wait yeah. till you're 70, you get 30% more. Your social security is a big annuity. It's making 8%. That's your biggest little nest egg that you got. People don't know this and they don't know how to, the sequence of when and how to get these things. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of levels there and, and then there's a lot of age, you know, where you're at with your age and the money. But if you start, and take time out of your life to learn this. Get my book, read this, listen to the webinars. And what's, what's the book? What's the book? The book is called Ready for Pre-Tirement. Okay, where can they get it? You can get it on Amazon. You can get it from my website, Healthy Money, Happy Life. Or just email me. Say, I want a book. I was on, and reference Steve. I was on your show, you know, and then I'll send you a book. In just fact, say, I was on Steve's podcast, right? Yeah, or yeah. I saw you on Steve's podcast. And, yeah. And if you say you saw me on Steve podcast, then, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do a two for one. You can buy one book and I'll send you two and give it to your kids, get your family, get your friends. You got to be prepared. Uh, I don't, don't want to talk to my kids about money. Okay. Don't. Some people do. Some people don't. It doesn't matter. Tell your, you know, share it with people. That's the point. Well, it's should a my good kids thing. know about money? Well, it doesn't matter if they do or not, because if you have, if you're going to teach them or you don't want to teach, that's up to you. The point is you got to learn about it. 
What are you uh, going to do? That's right. right. See, first we have to learn. And actually, I, I'm just the opposite of Chris. I think you better be teaching your kids about money. You I better agree. be helping them. And so every that's, time you, I, that's if what you I'm read, saying. This book, read this book to them as a bedtime story, they don't care what they go to sleep to. Right. And it'll, it'll impact them. And yes. always help yes. them learn and grow. Talk to your spouse about money. Talk to your kids yes. about money. Have kids oh. in the room when you talk about money right. because it's vital that we all start to go, wait a minute, what? Right. what? You know, right. I got I got a piggy bank, Dad. What should I do? Well, you should yeah. save every if, – if I give you a dollar as an allowance – a dollar, sure, I wish that was true. If I give you a dollar as an allowance, then you should take a quarter and put it in your piggy bank. Right. right? And that way like when you – yeah, and that way, when you want something, see, and this is what I find. When you want something, you can open the piggy bank and get the money out of it. No, you can't. Just mm -hmm. because you want something doesn't mean you should take it out of your piggy bank. You should teach your kid, hey, uh, I got, matter of fact, I, I just think out, and I'm on a thing now, what's it called? Uh, I forget what it's even called. But it's uh, uh, a, a five-tier thing about how you save your money. But it's put it into an income account, put it into a uh personal account put it into ask me i'll tell you how to yeah okay. and so and that That's way so the kids have kids mm -hmm. keep 50 cents they put 25 cents into their mm -hmm. um i want this fund and then they put 25 into their piggy bank and the piggy bank should never be broken into until they're ready to invest it right and the right. other i want money can be opened anytime they want but then they'll find out that that money goes away quickly so anyway yep. Get a hold of Chris. The whole point of this today has been get a hold of Chris right there, 951-926-4158. If you're listening to it on just the podcast, it's 951-926-4158. But remember this, if you're driving along listening to this, it's healthymoneyhappylife.com. Go talk to her. Look her up. Find out how she can help you make and keep more money. Healthy money, happy life. Right, Chris? Last one yes. minute to do us any final advice. Okay. Well, I know we've downloaded a, a lot of a lot of really good information here, and it's really pertinent to each individual. I'm happy to talk with everybody, but but there are three main things you want to make sure that you protect your assets, be able to grow them safely, create your own legacy, a living legacy. And as Steve says, I'm really a big fan. I actually have programs to teach the children. That is my legacy, where I'm I'm taking the, what I'm doing now. And my legacy is to teach children because they're going to inherit a bigger mess than we got. So it's so important that we help everybody with what we've got. But take time out of your life for yourself and learn what we're talking about here to create, imagine, create income you'll never outlive. And that gives you peace of mind. That gives you healthy money, happy life. And then you'll be able to bless everybody wherever you go. That's right. And, uh, uh... Of course, you've been listening to uh, the Happiness Agenda or Speaker Talks podcast. Uh, you know me, Steve Sapato. You can reach me at steve at stevesapato.com. So if for some reason you're driving along and you've got my podcast in your car or on your whatever and you forget who to contact, reach out to me and just say, hey, Steve, I want to talk to uh, the person you had on your show the other day who was talking about money. And uh, you can listen to Susie Orman all you want, but she's not going to help you in your business or your life. She will be glad to give you offerings and advice because she's rich and famous and she'll talk to you on the radio all the time. But if you really want to change your life, you should reach out to Chris and uh, see what she can do for you. If you have any questions, I uh, absolutely encourage you to reach out to one of us. And if you have any other questions, reach out to us. We'd love to be of service to you and help you change your life the way people have helped us change ours. Right, Chris? That's right. Thank you, Steve. Really appreciate it. Been a pleasure. I hope you guys all have a great 2022. Uh, and no matter when you hear this, I hope you have a great year. God bless. God bless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>